William Elmore, president and founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association, here today to bring you in another exciting Black Buddhist lecture. We at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association are not only the Black Buddhist Force in America, we are the Black Buddhist Force in the world, and we are the only Black Buddhist organization in the world that do not have Asian Buddhist masters. When we learn that the Asians educated all black history, culture, and language from the Buddhist teachings, we educated them out as our teachers. Now, today we're going to bring an exciting Buddhist lecture. My lecture today is called Buddhism and Depression. Now, this subject came about because my son, Anthony L. Elmore Jr., asked me, was I happy? And he asked me about depression. Let's listen to Anthony, and we're going to come back, and we're going to get into our lecture. Let's listen to Anthony L. Elmore Jr. This is Anthony L. Elmore Sr. Now, this young man here that you see, this is Anthony L. Elmore Jr. And Anthony L. Elmore Jr. has been the prodigal son. But the prodigal son has come and talked to his dad. And uh, he talked about the point of depression. And I told him that since he brought the subject up, I'm going to do a video on Buddhism and depression. He had some advice for me regarding this video. Tell him, son, what you, how you want this video. Pretty much everywhere you go, everyone knows what depression is. Everyone deals with sadness and being unhappy, but terms that are thrown around like happiness, love, having courage, these things are thrown around so much, and people don't understand what they truly mean and what they what they are. And I asked him, I said, you know, Dad, it's easy to talk about depression. It's easy to talk about your pain in that sense. What is not easy to talk about is what love is, how to how to make yourself happy. So I asked him, I said, Dad, what makes you happy? And one thing that he told me was. Happiness is a skill, and I took that one really to heart, but something that I've been looking into and learning about making yourself happy and self-love is that he's right, it is a skill, and it's something that you do have to practice. And Dad, I ask you again to inform those that are watching to explain, one, what happiness is, two, how to, how to gain it. And the first thing you must understand about Buddhism and how to overcome depression is that true Buddhism is not found in quiet meditation. In fact, you had better talk to yourself. You got to say, self, you're going to get ourselves out of this doom and gloom. When you are depressed, there's a voice that comes into your mind and says, oh, I'm depressed. Oh, I feel bad. Oh, I'm in doom and gloom. Oh, life is not worth living. You got to sometime come to yourself and say, shut up. Shut up. No, you're holding it. Go stop talking to me. Because when you're depressed, you are in a slump. And chanting, no, you're holding it. Go helps you to get out of this slump. Now, the purpose of the Buddhist teachings is to lead you to a state of enlightenment. Now, what is the exact opposite of enlightenment? You see, the exact opposite of enlightenment is depression. How in the hell do you wake up one day and find yourself depressed? It is only natural to feel down at times. The problem is when feeling down, is that when you get into a slump, you got to find the keys to get yourself out of this slump. And the Buddhist practice of chanting, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, will help you get out of a slump. You see, I have a five time world karate kickboxing champion, and the method is kind of the same. In other words, when a fighter loses a fight, the one thing that you want your fighter to do, you want to put your fighter on a winning trajectory. And so you may not let him go back and fight the top guy, but you let him fight somebody that he can win. And so when he goes and win, that helps that fighter to get his confidence up. You see, it's very important to have faith. It's very important to have confidence. 
it's very important to have wins. So the way to get yourself into a winning trajectory is to hang around winners. Now, on the other hand, the best way to be a loser is to hang around losers. Guaranteed, when you are around losers, losers will cause you to be a loser because being lo losing is infectious. Now, why do we practice Buddhism? You see, the Buddha said this, quote, No one can save us but ourselves. No one can and no one may. We ourselves must walk the path, unquote. The Buddha also said, Nothing can harm you as much as your own thoughts unguarded. You see, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot leave your mind open. It's like leaving the door to your house open. Somebody can walk around to your bank account and walk around and get your ID card or your, your bank card. And if you leave yourself open, somebody can come in there and do harm to you. Now, the Buddha said this. He says, quote, Our life is shaped by our mind. We become what we think. Joy follows a pure thought like a shadow that never leaves. Unquote. You see, the Buddha also said, what you think you create, what you feel you attract, what you imagine you become. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we must observe our mind and train our mind this Gohansan, now this is the Gohansan, it's the scroll inside the Gohansan, and we chant Nam Yoho Renge Kyo, or we observe our minds. That is how we learn to overcome suffering, is that you begin to see yourself, and when you can see yourself, you can change yourself because the Gohansan is like a mirror. So. You do not get confused. Another name for Buddhism is adopting a winning strategy. Do not let people confuse you with semantics about true Buddhism. True Buddhism is about seeing your life's mirror. People will scare you and say, you're a Buddhist. You don't believe in God. You don't believe in Jesus. Oh, you're going to go to hell. Oh, it is so bad. You see. People get hung up on these semantics. See, Buddhism is a skill. Buddhism is a practice. It is a practice to develop your God-like, your higher consciousness. You see, you have a choice. You can be like so many people, just let Jesus handle your problems. Or you can adopt a winning strategy called developing faith in God. The Lotus Sutra are true Buddhist teachings. Let me give you some written documentation about the Buddhist teachings or adopting a winning strategy or the strategy of the Lotus Sutra. In fact, Nitrin Shonen, you see, we practice the Buddhist teachings taught by the 13th century black Buddhist sage, Nitrin Shonen, and he taught his disciples by a method or by synonym letters. These letters are compiled together and they're called the Gold Show. Now there's a Gold Show called the Strategy of the Lotus Sutra. Now, the Strategy of the Lotus Sutra reads, right, it reads this, quote, Regard your survival as wondrous. Employ the strategy of the Lotus Sutra before any other. All others who bear enmity or malice will likewise be wiped out. These golden words will never prove false. The heart of strategy and swordsmanship derives from the mystic law. Have profound faith. A coward cannot have any of his prayers answered. Unquote. You see, please understand that our worst enemy of 
often resides in our body and mind. While Nietzsche wrote this letter to a samurai warrior, he says, quote, the heart of strategy and swordsmanship derives from the mystic law. Nietzsche writes, and swordsmanship, the point to understand the words, the heart of strategy derives from the mystic law. Have profound faith. You see, a coward cannot have any of his prayers answered. You see, let's give you an understanding of the Buddhist teachings as taught by the highest teachings of the Buddha called the Lotus Sutra. Now, in the Lotus Sutra, the title of the Lotus Sutra is called Yo Ho Renge Kyo. And we chant Namu Yo Ho Renge Kyo. Now, the word Namu means to awaken. Now the word yo means correct. It also means incomprehensible. It also means wonderful. It also means God. Now, the word ho means law. Now, in law is explained by a Japanese word called Ichini Sanzen, which is 3,000 worlds in a mutually existence. Now, see there's a mutual relationship between ourselves and the environment. Now, we in the environment live in what is called ten worlds. Now, these worlds are conditions or states of life that we live in. Now, the lowest world is called the world of hell. You know what hell is. Then, the next is hunger, where you desire for something. And the third world is animality to where we live on our instincts. The fourth world is called anger. Now the fifth world is humanity. Nothing good, nothing bad. Now the sixth world is heaven. See, heaven is like winning a lottery or it's like getting that money that you needed or getting the check or when something good happens to us, we have this euphoria. It's like, hey, getting with a, like a man, getting with a woman or woman getting with a man or however that works out, that's called rapture, that's called heaven. Now, the seventh world is a state of world called learning. That is where you go in and you find a sense of joy and learning. You get up into learning. You get up into the arts. Now, the eighth world is called self-realization. That is to where you are into your creative self, you begin to learn and you can lecture and you, you kind of get higher. Now, the ninth world, that's the world of Buddhahood, or that's the world of Christ-like, or that's the world of being like Martin Luther King, or that is the world where we go and help others. We, that's more of a pure self, we develop ourselves. That's called the world of Bodhisattva. Now, the tenth world is the highest life condition. This is called our enlightened or pure self. Now, enlightenment is not some kind of superhuman being, but to be enlightened is to where we develop our energy, vitality, energy, vitality, good fortune, and wisdom. That is a, our higher life condition. Now, what, what my son asked me, he asked me the question, Dad, are you happy? Now, see, Happiness is not static. It is not something that doesn't change. See, happiness, your life goes from one existence to another existence. In other words, everything in the universe is moving. Even though we're not, can't, we can't see it, but life is not static. See, cells go in your body. Cells in your body, they go to birth, growth, maturity, and death. There's a season. You go to bed every night. You wake up. You, you know, you grow. You go through birth, growth, maturity, and death. Everything is going through this cycle. The whole universe is moving. And you go from one life condition to where you're happy. The next time you're bad. The next time you go to a state of euphoria. So life or happiness is not just a static position. So if I saw actually, Dad, are you happy? The question should have been, Dad, are you in an enlightened life condition? You see? The, the world that we want to be in is not necessarily the world of heaven all the time, but it is the world that what comes may, we 
develop our higher self and we deal with life challenges. Whereas the world of depression, that could be a world of hell to where we feel sad and we feel hopeless and we feel that there's no answer. So these 10 words, again, hell, hunger, animality, anger, humanity, then there's rapture, or heaven, learning, self-realization, bodhisattva, and Buddhahood. So in Buddhism, we develop our lives to develop our enlightened life condition. Now, let's take this thing further. Now, at this point, people confuse the world of heaven and the world of enlightenment. Now, the goal of our Buddhist practice is to attain enlightenment. Now, enlightenment differs from the world of heaven. Most of us define heaven as happiness. We see what happens in our world and in our hearts. We define heaven as, as the paramount view of happiness. You see, we have this Christian concept that one day we will die and we're going to go to heaven and we're going to live happily ever after and there's not going to be any more poverty in the world and it's going to be a world of bliss and everything is going to be just great and no more problems in the world. Now, in Buddhism, there is no such thing as a, as a that state to where you are just in a state of bliss all the time. You see, there's a go show called Happiness in this world. Now, Nutrient Shonen wrote a go show and it says, there is no true happiness other than upholding faith in the Lotus Sutra. This is what is meant by peace and security and their present existence and good circumstances and future existences. Though worldly troubles may arise, never let them disturb you. No one can avoid problems, not even saints sages or worthies. You see, to say that there is no true happiness other than the Lotus Sutra is a bold statement, but see, the true happiness is not this euphoria, not this heaven, not winning the lottery, not winning the big prize, but the true happiness is being able to develop a strong and consistent life condition to where you become in the midst of a storm. You see, somebody offers us lemons and we change them into lemonade. We turn obstacles and opportunities. We change poison into medicine because we have a high life condition that we deal with life or we deal with what comes to me. That is the enlightened life condition that this Buddhism or this Lotus Sutra teaches us. Now, you see, the Buddha says this, quote, pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. Just because you endure pain does not mean you have to suffer. See, you can turn obstacles into opportunity. Someone gives you lemon and you can turn it into lemonade. In the Go Show, letter to Gokichivo go, go, reads, quote, the Buddha wrote that one should become the master of one's mind rather than let one's mind master oneself. This is what I mean when I emphatically urge you to give up even your body and never regret even your life for the sake of the Lotus Sutra. Unquote. This is the point. I want you to understand about Buddhism. The point is become the master of your mind and do not let your mind master you. You see, love does break your heart. This is what the Buddha say. You can search the entire universe for someone who is more deserving of your love and affection than you are of yourself. And that person is not to be found anywhere. You yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your love and affection. You see, it is the Buddhist teachings that teach us how to love ourselves. So many people get into love and they get abused or they're loving somebody else and not really loving themselves. You see, 
Buddhism teaches you that life is like a garden. If you do not cultivate your mind and extricate the weeds or the negative stuff out of your minds, it's like the weeds in a garden. Negative stuff will bring you down. When you're feeling down, the worst thing you can do is go to a pity party. Please understand the meaning of Namu Myoho Renge Ko. See, Namu means to wake. Myo means correct. Ho means law. Renge is a symbol of the lotus and it represents the law of cause and effect. And Kyo means to overcome. Delusion. You see, please understand laws of the universe. Now, there is a common law that you must understand. And that is, misery loves company. Man, when stuff go bad, other folk that's miserable come around you, and you uh, find next thing you know, you find yourself into the pity party talking about how bad life is. Oh, life is so bad. Oh, things are so bad. Oh, things are so terrible. You know, you turn around and find yourself into a pity party because misery loves company. And some folk that's miserable will do something to even make you more miserable because they hit you when you're down, you see? Now, let me get back to the question my son asked and say, Daddy, are you happy? I told my son that happiness is a skill and a practice. See, let's get back to the garden of life. What is the garden of life? The garden of life is the Lord of Sutra or Myoho Renge Kyo. The most important thing you must do is cultivate your garden. Weeds are always ready to grow in, your, in the garden of life. You got to root out the weeds and you just cannot just go spend some money and buy some Roundup. Now Roundup may be good, but it's going to kill the good stuff and it's going to kill the bad stuff. So sometimes you got to get your hands dirty and put some hard work into it and get some coins on your hand and rip out all the evil, rip out all the negative, rip out all the nonsense. You see, what is the world's greatest success? You see, you can become the world boxing champion, winner of the Super Bowl, or you can become President of the United States. You can win the $50 million lottery. The gold show reads, quote, there is no true happiness other than upholding faith in the Lotus Sutra. See, what is the Lotus Sutra? See, the Lotus Sutra is the correct law. The correct law is doing the right thing. There is a saying, refusing to do good is the same as doing evil. You see, the ultimate and absolute law of the universe is the law of cause and effect, or yo holding get cold. You cannot make a good cause and get a bad effect, nor can you make a bad cause and get a good effect. The first thing you must do is kill or to awaken. What do we awaken? We awaken to the correct law, or milho. The law is Renge or Lotus. We must find Kyo, or that means to overcome delusion. See, what do I tell my son or the daughters out there that's listening? See, Nitrin shown an answer to these questions in a gold show title on attaining Buddhahood in this lifetime. And it reads, quote, it is the same with a Buddha and an ordinary being. When deluded, one is called an ordinary being, but when enlightened, one is called a Buddha. This is similar to a tarnished mirror that will shine like a jewel when polished. A mind now clouded by the illusions of innate darkness of life is like a tarnished mirror, but when polished, it is sure to become like a clear mirror reflecting the sensual nature of phenomena and the true aspect of reality. Arouse deep faith and diligently polish your mirror day and night. 
How should you polish it? Only by chanting, Namu Yohori Gekyo. So to my son, and to my daughters out there, and to all the people who is coming to us for advice, how do you overcome depression? You overcoming depression by polishing your life, polishing your mirror. We chant Namu Yohori Gekyo so we can see ourselves and we correct ourselves. We develop the skills to become the master of our minds and not let our mind adopt, uh, master us. You see, I told you earlier that Buddhism is adopting a winning strategy. See, life is like a garden, and there's a science and a skill to having a successful garden. Having a successful garden is like having a successful life. There are keys to success. Life, however, is not so simple. We mentioned the 10 worlds, all phenomena has 10 aspects or characteristics. That is, it shows up this way. There's an appearance, a nature, an entity, which leads to a power. The power leads to an influence. Now, this influence goes into an inherent cause. And a her cause leads to relationship, then there's a latent effect, a manifest effect, and it's all consistent from beginning to end. Now, let me see how we can put this in a way you understand. Through chanting Namu Myoho Renge Kyo and adopting the Buddhist faith, I found a happiness inside myself. I broke the melancholy or sadness. I found a joy or a strength of character a happiness inside myself. See, the state or condition, what I call a winning spirit, is a state where you become the Teflon man, the Teflon lady, that you are able to handle things in life. You begin to stun up and gain a strength of character. Let me conclude this lecture. Now, my son asked me, was I happy or in the world heaven. The question should be, am I an enlightened person? See, the number one cause of accidental death in America is prescription drugs. There's a drugstore on every major corner in America, and the pharmaceutical companies in America are no better than your neighborhood crack dealer who is getting folk addicted to opioids. White people arrest black people for crack and give white people a lesser sentence for cocaine. Look at our world's success today. See, success is measured by the job you got, the size of your bank account, how big your house is, the clothes you wear, and the things in life on the outside. The Buddha nature or enlightenment is the development of your higher life condition. It is the confidence, it is the faith, it is the assuredness you gain through living correctly. The Lola Sutra is like a good physician that changes poison into medicine. What is the Buddhist faith? The Buddhist faith is like a good gardener. At the time of this lecture, it is one of time. We got a snowstorm in the Northeast. There is a gold show Buddhist writing called, quote, Winter Always Turns Into Spring. And it reads, Those who believe in the Lotus Sutra are as if winter, but winter always turns to spring. Never from ancient times on has anyone seen or heard of a winter turn into autumn. Nor have we ever heard of a believer and the Lotus Sutra who turn into an ordinary person. The Sutra reads, quote, If there are those who hear the law, hear the law, again, the Sutra reads, if there are those who hear the law, then not one will fail to attain Buddhahood. What this means is that we face difficult times like going through winter. Winter is not depression or hopelessness. We know that not only will spring come, 
we know that it's not wise to plant when the time is not right. Let me give you an example. You may be in the winner of your relationship, a job, a career, or a challenge. You learn to be wise. There's a time to plant a seed. A pair of lowly animals got sense enough to prepare for the winter. We have to prepare our lives to be ready for the winter or the difficult times. Nietzsche writes in the Gold Show, persecution will fall in the Buddha, and it reads, quote, urge on, but do not frighten the ones from Asahara who are ignorant of Buddhist teachings. Tell them to be prepared for the worst and not to expect good times, but take bad times for granted. Anyway, let me conclude this lecture with one final passage of the Gold Show. And it reads, reply to cure, that reads, quote, the Lion King is said to advance three steps, then gather himself to spring, unleashing the same power whether he traps a tiny ant or attacks a fierce animal. In ascribing this go hunting for her protection, Nietzsche was like the Lion King. This is what the sutra means by the power of the Buddhas, that is, that has the lion's ferocity. I, but I am not either happy or sad, but I am gathering my fierceness like that of a lion. And I'm gathering myself together to attack, to bring out my greatness. Anyway, I am Anthony M. Elmore, President and Founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association, bringing you another exciting Black Buddhist lecture, Buddhism and Depression. Thank you very much. Please wake up.